Hello everyone, this is Ether Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. So, here we are, a bit after reset in the 6.0 update, and uh, with the update came the new Coliseum Mode Summoner Duels. Uh, we'll definitely be talking about my thoughts about the mode, and as we go through our latest 20 matches, um, it's just going to be a mishmash of wins losses actually there's actually a i think a draw or two in there <laughs> uh so i don't remember everything but uh, we're gonna try and commentate our thought process and shenanigans as we go through the map there are some mistaps and unfortunate like baseball moments because the entire time i'm playing brain dead because i'm just trying to farm as fast as possible because if you don't know uh every season the favor level, I believe, resets, and so you have to farm a thousand favor level on the well for the highest hero level, of course, um, to get the max rewards. So I figured since the game mode is new, we should just grind a ton at the start and then take it easy towards later on in the season, which uh, we've already done here. We're already past halfway, and so. It's a very casual mode, but you can definitely make it competitive. There's leaderboards and whatnot. Right now for Legendary Krom, we're currently number one. It's not going to stay number one for long. Uh, we're not going to try and stay number one. It just so happens that I farm so much that <laughs> it ended up that way. But um, let's just go straight into the replays. I don't really care about spoiling results and whatnot. I don't think it detracts much from the actual match because it's only five turns, <laughs> so there's not very much to uh, analyze. But overall, uh, my thoughts on the mode, it's fine. Um, you'll also notice I do switch out my team comps a little bit. At the very end, it's basically this team comp, except uh, instead of Bramamon, it's Brave Erica. But the whole premise of this team is we're just trying to pressure uh, turn one for unsuspecting players. Um, a strategy I've been going for is just going for... That was redundant. I go for exchanges of units like one for one is my general strategy. And this, t this team is not particularly great. should also mention that we're running secret maneuver because uh, I like to have Deadeye up on Legendary Krom and I was trying out like Gracie's on Bramon just wasn't consistent uh, would not proc a lot of the time because it just takes too long to charge up I was trying out like having Seleph instead of not for the extra infantry pulse but it uh, nothing nothing really clicked this is pretty much my meme strategy so here are the enemy opponent here uh, is just um, waiting for us here and since they've already hit end turn we can just burn all our actions so you'll notice that their uh, icons went gray because they just hit end turn so the reason for that is they wanted to move first I guess I'm not sure why <laughs> but uh, there's some mechanics in this game I won't mention this video I'll just totally assume you already know <laughs> how the entire mode works even though it just literally came out a few hours ago but um but yeah because of that you're just I'm just free to use all of my actions there's no drawback to it so you'll I think you'll see in a future match we actually just uh goof <laughs> and hit end turn way too early on accident so we just get rolled but here we're getting set up um i save legendary crom from last year but unfortunately it doesn't do a lot to uh, gatekeeper but that's what this turn is for uh, we set ourselves up to a one round ko gatekeeper and it's basically like a one for it's just going to be a bunch of one for ones here uh, there's not much to really say here. We're just going for one for one kind of deals. So they take out one, we take out one. But the key thing is that we 
we have the advantage because we're holding on to legendary Krom. And because of secret maneuver, Krom charges up Deadeye. That's why I had him leave. So he could pick up the one shot on Niffle. So of course, um, Zane is able to uh, take out Krom, but we take out Zane, and now it's just Sheeta against Nils and not, and that's just GG. <laughs> so that's essentially the main crux of my strategy. As you'll see, it falls apart pretty quickly. Overall, I do like the general premise of the mode. It is a more casual based mode in the aspect that there's no real rewards for whaling other than, you know, you can beat your friends in 1v1s easier or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh... It's mostly for leaderboard flexing, which is, you know, it, it's cool and all, but it's not necessary. Like, a free-to-play player does not have to be worried that, oh no, I'm not going to be on the leaderboards kind of deal. But if you do make it on the leaderboards, it's free-to-play, you know, it looks kind of cool. <laughs> uh, but here, uh, the main thing we did here was set up not in such a formation where... We're ready to threaten their units, and since I set us up so that we have, we had more actions remaining at the end of turn one, we get to go first and start end or turn two. That's how it how it works. And so because we're running even pulse tie on Nils, we're just able to pick up the one shot on Ascended Fee Arm. That's the main meme of our strategy. We bring even pulse tie, and as you'll see, it's very useful. But, um, it's pretty whack. So, here we get a 2 for 1, and that's just too much for them to handle. Because their units are on the more frail side now, we have Bramlon chilling on the back as well. So, it's pretty much just GG at this point. Um, I'm not gonna do, literally commentate absolutely everything about my thought process. Uh, a lot of things, like me hitting end turn earlier or whatnot, is trying to get the initiative to move first at the start of the next turn. Sometimes I goof and do it on accident, so... <laughs> uh, not the greatest. We're up against a full plus 10 team here. We don't have a full plus 10 team here. We're just derping around with our jank team. I should stop showing my team here because I literally don't change out skills. It's just units uh, that I change out, so there's not really much different. We're just going for the same standard strategy. A lot of people are adopting for uh, the a save strategy. Of course, the thing about this mode is you can only bring one save, one unit with a skill that grants the savior status. So that allows you to do some things. But uh, I do find that uh, when, when our even pulse tie gets countered, we pretty much suffer the whole way. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Here, we're, they're basically stalling out at this point because they have the advantage in terms of capturing the main area uh, as they get the two points there. So their plan is to stall, and I realize that. So my game plan is I have to go set up a situation where we can get a nuke off. And so what I what they do here is they just keep flinging their units back that allows me to push forward and give a uh, force them to have less space. But I accidentally goofball here and uh, actually allow them to pick up the kill on Nils. I believe they so chose, but they didn't go for it. Not sure why. Uh, they really want to just be going for exchanges at this point because exchanges only benefit them. Thanks to Not, we're able to snipe down uh, their Claude there. Unfortunately, Bramamon can't actually take out Hellbindi. We end up wasting our Glacies to take out, uh, whatchamacallit. We end up wasting our actions to take out Gatekeeper. I do feel like this was an inaccuracy for them to take out, uh, Legyarn over uh, Bramamon. 
But it turns out it just doesn't matter because Bramlon's actually just unable to kill Hillbindi here. <laughs> so, a bit unfortunate, but it ends in a draw, 7-7. Uh, seven, seven. Kind of an awkward match. I definitely did not explain everything that I was thinking about. It's almost better if I do live commentary on a match, but I just kind of don't want to do that right now because I've played this for so many hours. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of balancing issues with this uh, mode, but overall, if you just approach it as a casual mode where you can just play against other people live, it's, it's fine. There's definitely some depth of strategy. You definitely can't use a bunch of traditional uh, strategies. So that's nice, but there are some already meta strats coming up <laughs> that we will not talk about in this video. This is just a video, probably a one of video, that's just going to be super long because there's 20 replays to go through. But at this point, we're just setting ourselves up, um, staying out of their threat range because we're more of a threat to them than they are. Because we have the ranged units and not, and they don't. They decide to approach us, which was an interesting move. They didn't do their damage calcs, I don't think. Of course, you have a time limit, so doing damage calcs is not great. But I was just doing my damage calcs here. <laughs> so, I already knew how things were going down. Like how Brave Ike was unable to take, would be unable to take out Bramamond. So that we could use Bramamond as a way to uh, chip down Brave Ike. So, Ascended Lake Gun can pick up the kill, <laughs> uh, which is pretty nice. And it's basically GG at this point because we have Legendary Chrom sitting there, so they really can't do much. And he even doubles Amelia here, so it's just definitely GG. Just, just uh, basically complete wipe. Um, Yuri is definitely super popular right now. Just because he has three movement in Kanto. Kanto is very useful in this mode. Mobility in general in this mode is just super solid. There's not much to say about that. Duo skills are actually pretty useful if you can set up certain situations. Duo Corn does it better than Duo Lin because just because Duo Corn is three movement. And this map doesn't really punish calves that much. It's just the two trenches that don't really matter if you're going mid. Um, so we just burn our actions. And uh, I'm pretty much just waiting for them to approach. Because the problem is we have to wait for Ascended Fiorm to uh, <laughs> drop Ice Mirror, I think, to one shot. Or I could be wrong about that. But they kind of over... I kind of forgot here that uh, Yuri <laughs> uh, casually kind of has an ability called a wind sweep. With, so with honorable blade and attack speed solo 4 and 3, uh, he's just super fast and just wind sweeps. <laughs> I, I was expecting Krom to counter and then he didn't counter. I was like, what's wrong? And yeah, I just blanked out on wind sweep no idea why and that just cost us the match there just that one inaccuracy but we were honestly just in general in a bad spot because we just have to wait too long the problem of even pulse ties a lot of units like yuri do accelerate their re-accelerate their specials uh with timed pulse so that kind of screws over our even pulse tie strat uh it's over at this point uh, there's nothing we can really do because we're just behind in the one for one exchanges and Ascended Fiorm is still there. Uh, but a big thing with this mode is managing your actions because, of course, you're doing the back and forth shenanigans. So you want to be able to burn actions <laughs> without actually doing anything. And typically that comes in the form of. Uh, having dancers or a unit like Krom with the change fate where you can use an action but just gain another action a one for one there's a lot of matches come down to uh, the capture rectangle 
area. I don't know what it's officially called, but um, this is where I think we permanently switched to Brave Erica and that's it. Uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Legendary Sigur is also insanely powerful in this mode, of course, because if he procs a special and you're running Knot or Dagger with ranged calves, you get massive range and you can really go for those one-for-ones because if you bring a bunch of nukes, you don't really care that your nukes die in one shot because they nuked first. So if you're always nuking first, you pretty much just have the advantage. So I burn my actions here so that they're forced to go first, but we're all just we're just kind of stalling, <laughs> uh, which allow but they do um, allow us to pick up first blood. And with the way they burn their actions, we're able to approach their units like this, and it's just GG because uh, if they. They don't really have much options here. We're just going to be going in, taking out units, and they can't do much about it. Uh, strategically, a lot of these matches are strategically decided after turn two. That's pretty much the deciding factor if turn two goes, how turn two goes down, is what I've noticed. Um, they just, this person just surrendered. I uh, presumably just because of my lead or something. I don't know. Yeah, there's 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 definitely some uh, balancing issues right now it's on this map in particular. Just range calves and pathfinder is just too powerful. Um, if you get a bad matchup into a save team, like for example, if you're running a lot of range units. I don't know why I keep showing my team, it's the same thing. Uh, if you keep running ranged units and running into a strong far save unit that you can't take out immediately, you're in a really bad spot turn two. Here we go for a play because they've already hit and turn with Yuri. We go for the one for one exchange there, which will take out any day of the week. Because we have Pathfinder and they don't. And we're taking control of the capture area more than they are. So we get points that way um, if they hide too much. They always have to be concerned about Pathfinder. So here we go for a play because they... Again, they didn't burn their actions very well, so we just can exploit um, exploit their positioning and use Kanto of Brave Erica to get out of Legendary Claude's range, and it's just GG at this point. Because the thing with dancing is you dance and that takes up your action, so the unit that you dance is just sitting duck um, until after the opponent makes a move. It's it's definitely weird to have Faye be turn based like or act or what is this action based? Like you take a turn and then your opponent takes a turn. It's quite strange to say the least. Uh, things definitely change as a result for sure. But uh, I imagine we're going to see pretty standard strategies. Kill power is generally a must. A full stall is technically feasible because there is that, I forget what the ability is called, but it moves the capture area towards your team. So it basically forces the enemy to go in if they, uh, if they're behind on points, essentially, it forces them to go in. So if if you're in that spot, you have to go in. It's pretty much a loss unless you can you have a lot of mobility and firepower. Uh, but here again, they don't place their units well, so that allows us to just place not here for free, and so we get a snipe down on soap. Again, it's going to be a one for one. I'd I was willing, of course, going to do sack. Uh, ascended Leg Yarn, but they just uh, 
They dance Legendary Leaf here. But that's their last action, so... Um, not entirely sure why they did that. Because that just allows us to go for more one-for-ones, which is more beneficial for us than them. So here we pull Brave Erica back because if someone wants to take out Brave Erica, they're in range of Legendary Krom because no one has uh, Kanto. So they have Legendary Claude pick up the kill, but Legendary Krom has Dead Eye up, so he doesn't care about that damage reduction from Fallen Star. So that's just GG at that point. Not really much they could do at that stage of the game or the match. But yeah, every time there's like a near save unit, we're basically almost always winning on the spot unless we goof. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Brave Eric just Brave Eric is pretty nice in this mode just because of her effective damage and of course her ability to one round KO units pretty decently. Uh, her main problem of course is her bulk and her mobility. She is a melee cav after all, and in this mode, range cabs are pretty strong. So here they don't use their uh, burn their actions very well, so we can just pick up that free kill on dual corn. It of course is going to be a one for one sack. Uh, of course, leg yarn is not going to stay alive here, but it's that one for one exchange. So we can apply more pressure um, with not. We actually pulled the change fate here because of course Duel Lin used her action so she can't actually attack any of us. So at this point we're threatening uh, Robin or Fallen. This is not Fallen. What is this alt? <laughs> uh, one, one of them, one of the Grimas. Uh, I'm blanking so hard right now. Zero out of ten. But uh, yeah, we're threatening that. We're also threatening Duel Lin with Krom. It's uh, GG. But yeah, our main strategy again focuses on pressuring turn one and s going for favorable one for one exchanges. Sometimes you can make a play where you essentially, if, if you're familiar with chess, it's kind of like gambiting a pawn. You sacrifice one of your units, but you get the initiative for doing so. Uh, which is kind of awkward because, of course, you're you're getting attacked first. So theoretically, if it's just a constant one-for-one -one exchange, you would lose. But it just depends on the scenario. So here we're just being careful to uh, pressure the enemy units while staying out of their threat range. And so they go for an advance on our units here. I decide to go for the one for one exchange off of Brave Erica as we want to get rid of that Kanto option as soon as possible. Because we can go for this uh, one for we can go for this exchange and that's not one for one. Uh, because we can just leave with Krom. Misala here is unable to one round KO Krom, so they dance a tree trying to snipe him down, but we can just leave. And now we can advance. I actually did make an inaccurate move there, putting not in that location, but we're just going to ignore that. <laughs> uh, because I forgot they were going to move first. <laughs> so, they just pick up the kill of a tree and gets Kanto away, and we just can't punish that. <laughs> actual L. What we can punish is that play because that forces them to uh, advance their units like so and we just take out a tree and it's GG because again they solo can't take out Krom. So we just got the free kill on Legendary Zura and it's over. There's definitely a lot of things to more things to analyze about these replays but again we're recording 20 replays. I don't want to sit around and do an in-depth detailed analysis on each one. Uh, that would be too much effort. Here we have a team against uh, all Makayas, which is pretty cool. Definitely see a lot of theme teams as well, which is cool to see. Um, the, the thing with this mode is that it generally... People 
basically upon reading the game me the, the mode mechanics kind of wrote off gale force as not viable because you only get six total actions and like using your dual harmonized skill takes an action dancing takes an action uh moving after proccing gale force is an action so you don't actually you can't gale force train uh in the same turn that is but there is definitely some merit to Gale Force if you can apply the pressure, for sure. Uh, here we are just doing some shuffling around. And we have the advantage again because we have not, and their range is much more limited than ours. Uh, if you're wondering, Ascended of Leg Yarn can't take out either of these units because damage reduction. <laughs> and then of course they have effective damage on the counter, so uh, that's never going to end well for Ascended Leg Yarn. I kind of just brought Ascended Leg Yarn just because she's a bow cab that kind of has a decent attack stat and speed stat. That's pretty much it. I'd much prefer... I probably should use like Legendary Leaf or something. He'd probably be better. Ascended Leg Yarn does have uh, Far Trace built into her kit though. So that's more useful to me in this kind of mode than Legendary Leaf. Because I don't have uh, Far Trace on him. But here we're able to gain some space because their duo makai is unable to take out not so we could just take up space and because of how they burn their actions we're actually able to take up more space so of course they have the advantage in terms of stalling out because they have uh they have earth rendering to move the catcher air towards them towards their side of the map and well the way again how they burn their actions we're able to get brave erica in range of their dancer makaya because she can't actually take out brave erica so again we get some get more space and here um we're inviting a one for one exchange so they're, they're, they can't have their Makaya run, so we can have Krom pick up the kill. And so now we're winning by one point, and we go for the reposition to protect Krom. And I already ran my Kelks, and this is a perfectly fine matchup for us. We're actually okay to take this exchange. Um, against Legendary Micaiah, I believe, unless I calc it wrong. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, they play inaccurately here. So I I attack here with Crown because no matter where, if Duo Micaiah, or Legendary Micaiah Revenge kills Legendary Crown, not always able to take out Micaiah. And then at that point, we're just winning because it's turn five. So we just win on score by one point there is a dynamic to this uh mode where you want your captain to be picking up all the kills but i don't really care too much about that to be honest <laughs> i kind of it just kind of comes along with the ride just because we have legendary crom taking out save units like uh ascended few arm here but this is a pretty relatively budget team in terms of merges, but it's just a generally solid composition. Harmonized Catcher is just super nice for the mobility and also the offensive power if you want to push. Uh, you can get those multi-attacks in to pick up kills. Because if you want, units like Ascended Legion aren't able to pick up kills consistently, especially against damage reduction. So, excuse me. Here again, they kind of don't play accurately. They allow us to uh, set ourselves up to ambush them. When we hit and turn. There, they didn't have an option, um, any options to help themselves out at that point. Once I hit and turn, I'm guaranteed to get the first attack at the start of the turn. Turn two. So here we go for one for ones. We start out by taking out Legendary Krom. 
because we can just canto out so it's just not even a one for one <laughs> but here we invite the exchange here and they do it take the exchange this allows us to one shot ascended fiorm because they decide to canto back and they don't pick up a kill there so we pick up another kill so now we're plus two on them and that's uh, just gg they're just outnumbered um they can only take out presumably you know if you for example they take out leg yarn we still have nils for an action so we can attack again with Krom, or we could attack with not basically up to us uh, so they're just not in a good spot there but yeah pretty much once you get the initiative you're pretty much almost always winning unless uh there's something going on with the capture area here we just played poorly uh earlier if you've been watching the entire video for some reason uh up to this point I said we might have accidentally hit end turn too early. This may or may not have been one of those matches. So here, of course, we're going for a standard strat. Uh, we're just keeping our range. Because what we're doing right now is stalling against Brave Hector. Is the problem is he has Aegis up, but the real problem is this is a very strong tech to my strategy. Is again, we're running even pulse tie. Uh, not odd pulse type because I don't have a lot odd pulse tie. That'd be much better here. But uh, the problem is we can't initiate into them. Um, Brave Erica can't do anything here because we can't advance not without not getting absolutely obliterated. So here we go for this aggressive push and pick up the kill on Yuri. I thought Yuri was more of a threat over Regan. Uh, turns out probably didn't matter. <laughs> but uh, here, of course, that's basically a one for one. But my inaccuracy here is I forgot that. I don't know why I forgot this, that fallen Demetrius Canto. So I couldn't take him out, which uh, kind of screwed me over. I don't, I don't actually remember if this was the match where I hit end turn too early, too early on accident. It, it, I think it is. It's one of them. Yeah, we actually hit end turn here on accident. <laughs> so they just pick up free kill. They just pick up a free kill there and it's GG. Uh, it's just too late. Again, we get screwed over because Duo P and he gets his special up. So, uh... We can't take out, there's just absolutely no, no way we can take out Brave Hector as long as there's Hardy Fighter, Aegis going, and it's just GG, so we just toss in Nils to get wrecked. But yeah, this would, this was just a tough match in general just because we didn't play our cards very well. Uh, burning turns was super difficult for us. The thing is, you might think initially when you start playing this mode that you can just hit end turn with basically whoever you want, but it, it, it actually does matter because you need to be able to constantly threaten the enemy team from advancing. You don't want them to just be able to advance into your threat range unpunished. That's basically the main idea there. Here, they, they're not running any save um, units here. They are running Pulse with a Osteous Pulse, but we advance aggressively here just because... <coughs> excuse me. Just because uh, we were given the option, but I also knew that we would have to retreat like we did here to avoid getting someone sniped down. And so we're basically just hiding they decide to go for the op or they offer an exchange and we go for it. I don't think this was the correct exchange, um, but you know, it, it kind of works out. I decided to gambit off uh, Nils if they said. I don't even know if they could take out Nils. I wasn't paying attention. They actually might not be able to, could be, might not be correct in that, but. I believe they couldn't take out Krom, which was the main problem. 
because of course uh, there's nine less attack there because of low attack defense and of course there's no penalty on Krom so it's only plus seven attack now, they are running hardy bearing though one thing I want to try down the line is vantage because I do think vantage is pretty strong if you can start eating up opponent's territory because you just slap a vantage unit down the problem is that vantage unit has to be able to deal with damage reduction because a lot of people bring units that have well damage reduction what a surprise <laughs> like brave erica on initiation but there's there's plenty of possibilities for that so here of course they have their ascended few arm and so we're just doing our usual setup Zero idea why they use their duo skill here. They don't need no follow-up for anything. <laughs> I guess they just use it to use it. I don't know. It is one way to burn the churn without doing any... Without actually moving your units. Which is actually a really relevant thing in some matchups. But here we troll them with even pulse tie. And pick up the ultra one shot. And so we're just inviting an exchange of units here. We take out... Yuri, because he's the biggest threat to us at this point. Now we can just camp. Uh, although, they have the... Whatchamacallit. They have the score advantage. So that's why we have uh, Brave Erica. Because that Kanto is super nice. And now we're inviting another one for one exchange. They accept, but they don't really have any options. Because they have to go in. Because they are lose they were losing on the score, so there was nothing they could really do there. If they didn't advance, we just stall the turns out and win that way. So the score thing and stalling opponents out is definitely a 100% viable strategy, for sure. Uh, I I've used it a couple of times. People have used it plenty of times against me. It's just a part of the mode that you have to deal with. So, again, same start. Most of our starts are the same, just because we're trying to apply as much pressure as possible. But we're up against an opposing team with uh, Pathfinder. But because of how, again, they position our units, we get not into position, and they decide to back up. Which gives us a space advantage and setup advantage. Uh, so we decide to burn all our actions, because... We gave them the option of going first if they wanted to, they declined, and so we just have the one for one exchange here. They, we can't follow up after that, but we do go further to change fate, which burns our action and threatens Fumeria. And we now run away from Ascended Leg Yarn, and we're in a pretty good spot because we have most of the capture zone. We are take, getting points for the capture zone shenanigans. So they advance Ascended Legion to go attack there, or just be, to be in range of our units. But again, we're gambiting a unit there. Uh, it's just another one for one exchange that only benefits me because I'll be picking up the kill with Legendary Krom, which gives plus one points compared to, to picking up a kill with any other unit. So here, again, we go for the gambit, and uh, I intentionally set it up so we ha we get the first action at the start of the turn. And at this point, it's just out. It's just not a great spot for them because we have the kill power and they don't. And we have the score advantage. This is where we just stall. We just run. <laughs> uh, because they can't win at this point. Their only way to win is to take both of our units out. And they can't do that. So that's just GG. On turns. So getting the score advantage early is definitely important. I would say for the most part. Some strategies don't care. But if you don't have the mobility to chase down a... Enemy team that's running away because they have more points than you, you're pretty much just screwed. <laughs> uh, 
nothing more to say about that. So let's... This team played very, pretty, pretty decently. There, I think they did make some mistakes though. Um, I made a mistake here. I put Brave Eric in range, not realizing that they can burn actions, uh, and still fling up like Dual Corin or Legendary Lilina in. So I was like, wait a second, <laughs> that's not good. Uh, but they don't quite take advantage of it uh, presumably because they, they just didn't have enough actions to get a double kill with it so they, they probably didn't feel like it was worth it but at this point uh, they just pick up the free kill there but it's a one for one exchange but the problem is we have Kanto so we just run preventing any more exchanges and here Lilna doesn't have her special up so she has absolutely no chance of taking out uh, not her legendary Krom so we can just take the initiative and pick up the kill on Brave Hector and it's just GG at this point I've set it up so we move first and there's a lot of times in these uh, replays where the enemy the opponent if they knew what they were doing they could take the first action of the next turn but they don't do that so we just Get the first action which is a advantage if you're already ready to strike down an enemy unit in the upcoming turn here I just I did not play well at all <laughs> period we just goofballed so hard on this match feels bad but again the problem of our strategy is we have some units that just can't reach the enemy units in a good way, excuse me. So I put not in range of Duo Sigur just because there's no threat to us there. Um, I hit end turn there just so we can guarantee we get the first action and start the next turn, but then I forgot so that they could just repo out, or just not even repo, they just leave. <laughs> so <laughs> kind of a small problem. They go for the reposition with the duo skill. And now we start initiating the one for one exchanges. But the problem is, I forgot that they're just going to pick up the kill on Legendary Krom with uh, Ninja Agren. So they get four points for that. So already in a bad spot because they pick up, they're able to pick up another kill here. And the thing is, they have Kanto. <laughs> So Brave Erica can't a revenge kill immediately. We have to burn the action, leaving Brave Erica in range to get one shot by the opposing Brave Erica, which is unfortunate. And at this point, it's just GG. They have the one point advantage, so they can just run. And we can't do anything about it. Uh, I decided to meme and wait for even pulse tie to go off, but it doesn't change anything. What does change things though is when they move their brave Erica there because because of that I'm able to put not there uh, where I put not and uh, brave Erica I believe is unable to actually pick up the kill on not because there's a of course bonus doubler from Faxi from from Faxi and of course there's Moon Twin Wing as well I think I could be wrong. Um, because Brave Erica had, was that 54, 59, 54, yeah. So Brave Erica couldn't double, so yeah, she definitely couldn't kill. And well, at this point, it's just GG. Again, they can just run. We can't take out both of their units, so it's just over. Um, and that just basically came down to making poor exchanges uh, that that exchange where we sacked Legendary Chrome was definitely incorrect for sure. So here's a team with uh, some solid mobility. They have not Legendary Sigurd and company. You know, if not, that can be very devastating, especially if you can proc a special. Of course, we have even Pulse Tie, so we are able to leave Brave Erica out there because of how they position their units. I hit enter early, so we guarantee ourselves the first action 
on the start of turn two. So we can just go for an exchange. And I said to go for the exchange here. The actual choice of where I decided to plop Brave Eric afterwards is kind of meaningless because uh, the problem was there's Kanto. So they can just take out Brave Eric with dual core and wherever and uh, run away out of our threat range. So I figured we might as well do that. Uh, force a unit to attack Brave Erica from there. But now we're stalling actions uh, because we have more actions than they do. So we're able to set up ourselves a situation where we're gambiting not here. They can attack in with a uh, duo Sigurd, uh, or legendary Sigurd. I don't actually think that goes well. <laughs> uh, could be wrong. But um, they don't accept it. So we can just stall. They advance with dual corn, but the problem is dual corn no longer has an action, so we can just have Krom get ready to snipe down someone. They activated duo skill in hopes of surviving legendary Krom, but it's a red unit against Deadeye, so no. <laughs> That's just no. And so now we're initiating one for one exchanges, but we got the first. Uh, we got we had an extra kill there because of uh, Ascended Leg Yarn. So it's just over because pick up the kill on Legendary Sigurd, and it's just over because uh, we could even just run if we wanted to, and Duo Corrin cannot follow us to pick up pick up a double kill and win so yeah overall my thoughts on the mode it's it's it'll, there's definitely some depth to the mode in terms of strategy and whatnot the meta is definitely slightly different than other thing um the, there's definitely some things that are different i do like i do think the longevity of the mode is going to be the free duels, um, or you can set rules, or even just the practice duels are just for meme shenanigans because you're just playing against AI with that. Yeah, favorite battles I just don't really see without some really big updates. I don't really see it being a super great mode, especially farming to 1000 favor level is just... I know you get two, we get two weeks for it, but that's still a lot. You could like lowball it and say you need to do like needs to get seventy um, favor a day. You, you'd be slightly short of one k if you did so. To do that, you have to play a minimum of four matches and a maximum of a lot of matches, and a lot of the matches don't take negligible amounts of time so it's just basically a time sink you're just grinding uh, which is not where i would like to see this game head towards yeah we're definitely not going to be holding rank one for long people are farming and we're not again we're not going to care about leaderboards and stuff we're just going to be grinding rewards and later on you know like if we're streaming or whatnot being able to duel people is nice for the fun of it. That's pretty much it. That's well, that's what I see out of this mode. It's just a way to have actually play to have live PvP, which is of course always controversial, but it's something new. Um, there's definitely infinite potential for shenanigans. <laughs> you can make your own kind of modes, self-imposed modes using the platform here. Thing about the mode being five turns means the matches can't go on for super long and there can't be infinite stall wars, but it does mean that there are some strategies that really benefit that really uh, benefit as a result of it. Um, but anyway, this is a ridiculously long video. We're just rambling brainlessly because. We're just completely brain dead right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, overall, I just don't like the grinding of the mode to get the, all the rewards. Other than that, um, they'll be adding more of the 
I don't even remember what they call them. It's something to do with the captain. Uh, and there is a bonus um, for non-save skill units with uh, melee range to kind of try and balance things out, but ranged units are just incredibly powerful. Or melee cabs or yeah, that kind of thing. This is just the scoring system. And we're just so brain dead right now that uh is it not here okay let's just go to here yeah the captain skills okay yeah so earth rendering is fantastic for stall teams and it doesn't even have to be like an actual stall team it's just a team where you're just camping is once you have the score advantage and you can just run away because you force the enemy to come towards you into your threat range you can have nukes on your team ready to exchange one for one and basically the opponent who has is forced to approach you is just in a really bad spot almost can never win in those kind of scenarios when done right a droid captain i don't know what to think of it it's just no follow-up which in the current meta right now, when everyone's just going for one for one exchanges, having large mobility and stuff, it's not particularly great. There are some strategies that would benefit from it, but again, it's kind of like Legendary Biolips, uh, what is it? Professorial Texture, whatever his weapon is called. Uh, questionable to be dependent on speed, but uh, I've been using the Secret Maneuver literally since the beginning, just because the special acceleration is super nice and also being able to disable skills from foes kind of like Bramamon's Impenetrable Dark or uh, Legendary Lin's Refine it's just super solid against teams that are trying to just potato with like damage reduction save ball from with like Ascended Few Arm or something it's super nice to troll them with our even pulse tie dead eye combo <laughs> But, uh, anyways, this video is absolutely way too long. I don't even know if I'm going to, uh... I don't think I'm going to make this a regular series. This is definitely going to be a one-of of showing literally all our past 20 matches and stuff. Um, just a few... I just toss in a few thoughts here and there about the matches, but... Yeah, let's just end the episode. <laughs> That's going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. As always, this is Ether Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye!